Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Bonnie Eisenman, I'm a software engineer at Code Academy, um, and today I'm going to do a quick intro to Arduino workshop for you. Um, Arduino uh, is a great way to get into hardware hacking, so if you're at a hackathon, this is a great place to start. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to go through why you should be using Arduino, what makes it awesome, uh, what you can do with it, and then how to get started and how to do your own projects. Um, you can also see I've got a link to this presentation if you want to refer to the links here later. Um, so yeah, let's start with uh, what the heck is an Arduino. Uh, I know it's a funny name and a lot of people who've never used it before look at me kind of funny when I mention it. Um, so the important thing is basically that it's a family of microcontrollers or mini computers, however you want to think about them. Um, you can program them and you can use them to interact with the real world. They have input and output, which is uh, very useful if you want to do hardware hacks. So, um, the reason why you should be using it, um, it's an easy way to get started with hardware. Um, it's open source, which is useful because it means that you know you actually have access to resources. There's a really big community around it. Um, there's a ton of libraries and tutorials, um, and it's the community has made I think a real effort to be very beginner friendly. Um, it's very mature at this point. Uh, you know, it's I'm not sure exactly how long it's been around, but long enough that. Um, you know, most electronic suppliers now, you can find them, and you can find a ton of great how to get started guides. Um, it's also relatively moderately priced. Um, an official Arduino board will go for $30. Uh, to get started, you'll need about $50 worth of supplies to really get started making your first project. Um, of course, that's if you buy from official suppliers. Uh, as I'll discuss later, there are other options to bring the prices down. Um, so it's also worth discussing, I think, why you shouldn't use it. Um, it's not, uh, you know, just because you want to do a hardware hack does not mean that this is a solution. Um, it's, like I said, it's moderately priced, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to be economically feasible. Um, there, are all, there are alternatives. You can buy um, much simpler microcontrollers for like the $2 range instead of the $30 range, which is nice. Um, it's not the easiest to connect it to a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth network. Um, I mean, you can do it. It's totally feasible. If you're doing it at Hackathon, it means you're going to spend extra time getting that set up, hoping that plays nicely with your host uh, locations, Wi-Fi network, all that stuff. Um, if you desperately need reliable networking fast, I would recommend the Raspberry Pi, which, uh, which is a lot more like a normal computer, just in a smaller footprint. Um, I also, this is um, one of my personal uh, opinions, and I'm sure some people will disagree with me, but the Arduino language is really not uh, my favorite. Um, and I think for beginners it can be a little bit difficult because on the surface it appears pretty standard. It looks a lot <laughs> um, it looks a lot like Java. And then you real and then it starts throwing C compiler errors at you. Um, you can include Java libraries sometimes, sometimes not. Um, it's like processing most of the time, sometimes not. And it's not the easiest thing to Google. So uh, expect to run into a few difficulties with that. I don't think that that's actually a huge problem with, when it comes to the platform, but it's something worth keeping in mind. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some example projects, um, like things that you can definitely do at a hackathon, right? Um, or on your own time afterwards. Um, so one thing is you see it used in like wearables, uh, so-called wearable technology, or soft circuits, which is basically stitching electronics into clothing and things. Um, which is pretty neat. Uh, I've got an image there of the turn signal bike jacket, which has switches in the sleeves so that you can uh, light up the turn signals on your back, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, you can also use it for home automation, whether that's you know uh, proximity controlled door locks, Twitter controlled coffee bot, coffee pots, or coffee bots. I guess either of those is fine. <laughs> um, uh, I've built a lot of electronic musical instruments with Arduino. Um, I've built a robot before at a hackathon with Arduino. Uh, if you really want it, I guess you could use it for a quadcopter. Um, most hardware hacks basically are pretty feasible. So this is an example of one of the things I built in a hackathon. Um, so yeah, that was a simple thing that I threw together with a couple of friends. I think there were three of us all told. Um, we decided to take the Hack Princeton title of the hackathon literally and hack the staircase. Um, 
And all that is is six light sensors, an Arduino Uno, and some flashlights. It's really one of the most basic circuits you can imagine, um, but it works really well. And I think that's really the interesting power of Arduino. Um, there's a, I'm going to talk uh, soon a little bit about the different inputs and outputs you can have, but basically when you're trying to think of interesting things to do, um, because it makes so, much, so many things simple for you, uh, you're basically just constrained with how you can imagine putting them together, um, which I think is, opens up the room for a lot of re really fun stuff. Um, so I have a couple links up here for inspiration. I think that if you're just getting started with the platform, it's really useful to sort of look around, see what's out there, um, see what other people are doing, and then jump from that into realizing what else you can probably do. Um, and a lot of the different blogs that cover Arduino hacks and things like that are really happy to feature you too. So it's a good idea to sort of read them, browse them, get a sense for what kind of stuff they post. And then after your hackathon, I would really encourage you actually to uh, contact their tips lines and talk about your awesome hack. Um, not just because it's great to have people uh, go, oh, that's cool, but also because you'll get a lot of feedback about what you can be doing smarter or better or differently with Arduino, which is really fun. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about where you can buy things. Um, a lot of hackathons will uh, let you buy things ahead of time and expense them if they've got hardware support, uh, whereas others will just have like kit for you to play with and you just arrive and just pick from what's available. Um, but if you want to pursue your own personal projects also, it's really good to think about suppliers. Um, so Adafruit and SparkFun are my favorite US-based suppliers for things with really good documentation, fast shipping. Um, Adafruit is New York-based and they're really awesome. They produce excellent tutorials. Um, Mouser is another option. Um, it's much less user-friendly, uh, but it's a great place to buy things in bulk. Um, so I've used them before. And then, of course, you have your unreliable, or less reliable, I guess I should say, but much, much cheaper uh, suppliers from China. Uh, in Hong Kong. So I've done that before, and I mentioned before that if you're buying official Arduino boards, they can run you around $30. Um, you'll find knockoffs in the 2 to $3 range if you're buying from Hong Kong. Um, of course, then you run into the issue of you're not supporting the Arduino Foundation. So if at all possible, and if you have funding, I would encourage you to actually buy the official boards. Um, but it's good to know that there are alternatives out there if you need them. Um, this is also a good way to buy cheap Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips. Um, I, they run, they're usually, again, like a tenth of the price that you might see elsewhere. Sometimes like 25% of the price, so good to keep in mind. Um, it's a good thing to think about also where you can get go for help to talk to other people. Um, the Arduino forums are great, the Adafruit forums are great. If you're in a community where there are other people working on this stuff, check out your local maker spaces, your local uh, hackathon communities, and you'll usually find that people are pretty eager to talk to you and help you through things. Um, so now I want to sort of talk about common parts that you can get, and this is sort of where the fun opens up, um, because there's so many different things that you can plug into Arduino. Um, so inputs, right? Uh, touch sensing is probably the easiest because all you need is a wire and some basic components and some tin foil maybe. Um, and you can do a lot of variation on that. Um, you can do light sensing. Uh, one light sensor costs about a dollar. Um, you can have switches, buttons, dials, knobs. You can have flex sensors. You can have heat sensors, microphones. Like there's so much stuff here. Um, and this is why I said before you're really limited by how you can figure out to combine this. Um, as far as outputs go, a lot of people use LEDs because they look cool and they're like a very uh, easy way to like visualize whatever you want to do. Um, I also do a lot with music. Um, a lot of the time I'll actually um, do the music generation on my laptop instead of on the Arduino, but the Arduino can make music itself as well. It's a little more complicated programming wise. Um, you can do motion with uh, motors, you can do network communication, um, you can control an electrical outlet. So there's a lot of stuff. And if you think about combining these, right, so to use my piano as an example, I basically took six light sensors, um, and then the output was pipes through my computer uh, using just, you know, serial communication um, to make music, right? So that's just one input, one output. Um, the thing for you to figure out is how you want to handle that interface. Um, or like another project I've done, we made a six-legged robot for a hackathon. Why not? It was controlled by Twitch TV. Um, so, you know, you've got your input, in this case, is a basically a chat room on the internet, um, which goes over Wi-Fi to uh, an Arduino chip, which then controls the servos. Um, so again, 
that's just one input, one output. Um, you can obviously combine stuff to do a lot more complicated things, and that's really fun too. Um, I would definitely encourage you when you're experimenting to focus on getting the individual parts to work first, just to make sure it's feasible. Because sometimes you might think you can mash up a bunch of stuff, but it's better to start simple and build from there. Um, so I mentioned networking. Um, there's been a lot of development in this for the last year, actually, um, in terms of things getting much, much cheaper, which is exciting. Um, so serial communication via USB is like pretty easy. You can get that working like easily. That's not a problem. Um, Bluetooth is Bluetooth has gotten a lot cheaper. I buy my Bluetooth boards for about I think two fifty each. Um, so that works too. Wi-Fi is really confusing on Arduino, and I think that's a little unfortunate. Um, there's the Electric Imp kit, which is actually really great to use, but unfortunately a little pricey. Uh, there's the XBs, even pricier. Um, you can buy simpler Wi-Fi chips, which are very cheap and very hard to use. Um, so there's a lot out there. Uh, if you want to do a hackathon project involving Wi-Fi, make sure that you spend enough, you budget enough time to get everything working. Um, when I mentioned Ultrasonic, I said I'm mostly kidding, except me and a friend did get that working. So. <laughs> Um, that was fun. Uh, you, it has very low throughput, so uh, I think like one character per second. But uh, I would not recommend that. But it could be entertaining. Uh, so feel free to think of like weird ways to communicate between Arduinos and whatever else you need. Um, but in general, USB is going to be the most reliable, followed by Bluetooth, followed by Wi-Fi in terms of feasibility. Um, I also want to briefly mention that soft circuits and wearables are a thing. Um, they're really fun. If you want to do a thing like this, you need to buy slightly different materials. You're going to want inductive thread. You're going to want the round washable incarnations of the Arduino. Um, batteries are not washable, so make sure that you can remove them if you actually intend to use this. Um, I mentioned bare paint because it's actually conductive paint that's probably skin safe. Um, they used to advertise it as such, and they've stopped. So. Uh, um, <laughs> But yeah, so it can be really fun to integrate electronics in unconventional ways. So like one thing I'm building right now, for example, is a wooden jigsaw puzzle where the circuitry is all painted um, and it lights up when you finish it, right? So you can do strange interfaces if you think outside of the normal idea of hardware as like wires and rough edge chips and things like that. Um, so to plan a project, count your pins. Uh, an Arduino Uno only has six analog pins, and that's what you use for things like light sensors. So just keep in mind like your limits. Um, and don't worry about optimizing things, at least at first. Arduinos are great for prototyping, so you don't have to get super fancy. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about how to actually get started programming and what this consists of. Um, if you want to be able to do anything with Arduino and look up stuff and understand tutorials, you're going to be really helped if you have a basic understanding of electronic circuit diagrams. Um, it really doesn't have to be a lot. Like We're talking maybe the first two weeks of a physics class. Um, know your symbols, know what the diagrams are actually trying to tell you. Um, in this case, I've highlighted the ones that I think are really important when you're trying to read these tutorials, because um, you're going to encounter them uh, very often. Um, also, please don't create a circuit with no resistance and no resistors. I know a lot of people forget to buy resistors when they get started, but that will actually kill the things you just bought. Don't do that. <laughs> um, breadboards, also a thing you'll need. Um, I've tossed this stuff in this presentation because it's meant to be a reference and just like a quick index of stuff that you might need later. Um, so again, a breadboard diagram just shows you the layout. Um, resistors, these are the things that not only will stop you from frying your boards, but are very important for different circuits you might build. Um, so this is the Hello World uh, equivalent for Arduino, and I've linked to it here just because um, you should know that the Arduino website has a ton of really great tutorials for getting started. Um, you can tell that they both have the visual version, which is, um, you know, actually shows you what it'll look like vaguely in real life, um, as well as the schematic. And it's really useful if you're able to learn how to translate between those and to know how to take the schematic and make it real. Um, in this case, you just need a resistor, an LED, and then to connect it up. Um, so that is the equivalent of Hello World, and you start with this. Um, and then from there, you can move to more complicated things. You can see this is a marginally more complicated circuit. Again, they give you the visuals, which is you know great. You can get started like that. Um, and so again, to use my piano stairs as the example, all that was was this times six. Um, which, again, 
works out really well. So I've linked here to the Adafruit tutorial. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of their work and they've done a lot to sort of make this easy to approach and easy to mix and match and combine different functionality. So that's that. Um, if you really want to get fancy, uh, Arduino does have support for interrupts. Um, if you don't know what interrupts are, this probably will not interest you, but I wanted to throw it out there because a lot of people don't realize it. Um, but anyway, so thank you. Um, I'm glad you all were listening, and I hope that this was kind of helpful. If you have any questions about Arduino, um, again, uh, you can ask me on Twitter or uh, make use of your local communities because there's a lot of awesome people out there. We have a couple questions in the chat too. Sure. So someone wants to know what the differences are between like all of these Arduino-like things like SparkCore, Tessel, or Raspberry Pi, or Edison. Sure. Um, so there's a couple different things, right? Um, the Raspberry Pi, for instance, is really more of an actual computer. Um, it's, it doesn't deal with physical interactions quite as well, even though it can. Um, whereas within the Arduino family, it's sort of a description of a family of things that behave similarly. Um, so there's actually, the difference tends to be things like form factor, price, number of inputs and outputs. Um, with the Spark Core, it's about being able to use Wi-Fi easily. Um, that's the idea, anyway. I've had issues with them in the past, um, but sometimes they work great. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it can be hard to know where to start. I recommend the Uno as like the most basic starting block. And then uh, another question um, about using an LED straight on an Arduino and killing the board. I don't know if that was a question or a comment, but someone says, uh, you must have a current limiting resistor or you will kill the board. Um, you're more likely to kill the LED than the board because the Arduino does have some regulators on it. But yes, you should always have resistors, like I mentioned. Um, what are some resources for learning uh, basic electronics? Um, I think that if you're looking to get into hardware hacking, I'd actually uh, recommend against trying to learn basic electronics like as an individual topic. Um, I think it's really effective to take a project-based approach in order to how you might teach yourself programming, which is that uh, you figure out something you want to do and then you figure out how to do it. Um, at least for a lot of this kind of stuff, it's now become so simple that you really don't need to know how, um, you don't need to know all that much. I mean, there's a lot of really good Coursera electronic engineering courses if you are interested in them. And eventually you will want to learn how to make your own PCBs. That's like the biggest skill that I think is useful.